are you ready to master the art of simplifying expressions like these? In this video, we're breaking it down into easy steps, and by the end, you'll be solving them like a pro. There are three parts. First up, we'll dive into the most crucial rules of indices. If you think you already know them, well, we'll explore them in a way that might just surprise you as we think about the why and not just the how of these rules. In the second part, we'll level up to the more challenging rules, including those tricky fractional powers. And finally, we'll put it all together with some really tough examples that will truly test your skills. But remember, this is more than just memorizing rules. The thing that sets top students apart is that they truly understand the why as well as the how, and often they don't need to memorize rules because it just makes sense. All of the content here comes straight from my online courses for GCSE and A-level maths. So if you're craving more, check out courses.mathsaurus.com for a world of maths without YouTube's ads and distractions. And if I mention any extra problems or worksheets, that's where they are. So let's get started and become experts in the rules of indices. So in this first part, we're going to look at the rules of indices. Well, it's really important that we know how to use those really confidently and in more complicated situations, and that we also really understand why they work. So we're going to start here by talking about each one of these rules in turn and really thinking about justifying them carefully. So the first one, a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. Okay, so what I'm saying here is if I've got something like a to the 5 and I multiply it by a to the 4, I can do a times a times a times a times a times a, that would be a to the 5, and I multiply it by a times a times a times a, uh, that would be a to the 4. So what I'm really saying in this rule is that if I have 5 a's multiplied together and then 4 a's multiplied together, in total I've got 5 plus 4 uh, a's multiplied together. So I could think of this whole thing as a to the 9 rather than being a to the 5 uh, times uh, times a to the 4, right? There's 9 in total. And that rule uh, would apply uh, in general here, then, you know, if I had b to the 4 times b squared, then that would be b to the power of 6, etc. Okay, so I can just add the powers to multiply. That one's not too bad. Now, what about a to the m divided by a to the n? We've got a subtraction rule here, so I get a to the m minus n. So again, what I'm saying here is that if I have something like 7 to the 4 and I divide it by uh, 7 squared, okay, I've got 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 on the top, and on the bottom I'd have 7 times 7. Now when you see numbers in a fraction like this, you know you can cancel them out. Effectively what I'm saying is I can cancel two numbers from two 7s here from the top and two 7s from the bottom, and I'm left with just two on the top, right? So it's the four that I started with minus the two that I've cancelled out. So again, we can see that that would work with any combination here, right? If I did five to the six divided by five to the four, okay, I'd start with five sixes on the top and I'd divide by five times five times five times five and I'd cancel four of those fives, okay? Now, you might be asking a question here, hang on, what if it's the other way around? You know, how do I justify uh, something like uh, 5 to the 4 divided by 5 to the 6? Right, um, something slightly different happening there when the number on the bottom is bigger than the one on the top. And we're going to come to those um, in just a second. But first, let's just have a look at a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n, right? So uh, this third rule here. So an example... Uh, of this sort of thing would be to do maybe x to the 4 all to the power of 5, and I'm saying I get x to the 20, right? And the reason is, what I'm doing is I'm taking x to the 4, which is x times x times x times x, and I'm multiplying that whole thing by itself five times, right? So I do x times x times x times x again, and I just repeat this uh, five times. My x's are getting a little bit messy here, and you notice also but it's not really the best idea to use times and x in the same line. I hope you can tell the difference between the ones that I'm thinking of x's here and the ones I think of as times, right? But overall, I've got four x's here multiplied together, four here, four, four, and four, and I've done that five times overall. So if I want to count the total number of x's in this expression, it would be four times five, which is 20. So that's where this rule comes from, okay? Now, um, if we look at the bottom line here, a to the minus 1 is 1 over a, a to the minus n is 
1 over a to the n and a to the 0 equals 1, we're going into negative indices. And people do find these quite confusing. And I think it's sometimes because we've never really, we don't always think where these come from. Okay, so let's just um, work out why these rules are true. And I think that will really help you understand these, these better. So let's write down the powers of 3. Okay, 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27, etc. Right, 3 to the 4 is 81. As I go up this list, right, I times by 3 for each power. So if I ask the question, uh, what comes below this if I try to do 3 to the 0 and then 3 to the minus 1 and 3 to the minus 2, the natural thing is to say, oh, well, look, as I go down this list, I'm just dividing by 3 at each step. So if I keep dividing by 3, this would give me um, a, a way of defining the zeroth power and the negative powers in a way that is consistent. That's what we're always looking for in math, this consistency. So I do 3 divided by 3 and I get 1. And that's why 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now 3 to the minus 1 would be a third because that's 1 divided by 3. Right, 3 to the power of minus 2 would be a third divided by 3. And a third divided by 3 is 1 ninth. You know, it's the same as uh, a third divided by 3 is the same as 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. Okay, um, and I can keep going. 3 to the minus 3 would be a ninth divided by 3, and that would be 1 over 27. So what you see here is that uh, 3 to the minus 1 is 1 over 3. I could write that as 1 over 3 to the 1. 3 to the minus 2 is a ninth. That's 1 over 3 squared. 3 to the minus 3 is 1 over 3 cubed. And now you can see where these rules come from. And they'd be true for any other number I started with, right? If I started with 5 to the 0, 5 to the 1, 5 squared, 5 cubed, again, I'd have 5, 25, and 125. As I go up this uh, chain uh, in this time I am multiplying by 5 and as I go back down it then I am going to be uh, dividing by 5 uh, at each step so if I just keep dividing by 5 I can fill in that 5 to the 0 again is 1 right so you see that actually anything to the power of 0 is 1 by this same argument because I'm always starting with that thing to the power of 1 and dividing by itself so it, it gets me to 1 again right and similarly if I do 5 to the minus 1 that will be 1 divided by 5. 5 to the minus 2, 1 divided by 25. 5 to the minus 3, 1 divided by 125, etc. Okay, so uh, again, this is 1 over 5 to the 1, 1 over 5 squared, and 1 over 5 cubed. Now, the other rule of indices, perhaps, that I haven't actually written directly in the rules of indices here, but that is very useful, is that if you have something like x times y to the power of n, uh, that is equal to x to the n times y to the n. Perhaps that one's a bit clearer why that's true, right? You know, if I do x, y cubed, what it means is I do x times y and then x times y and then x times y. So you can see I've got three lots of x here and three lots of y. So I end up with x cubed times uh, y cubed there. And this also works for uh, fractions, right? So if I have uh, x over y to the power of n, um, let me get out of the way of this, then I have uh, x to the n is equal uh, over y to the n. Again, you know, if I do something like 2 thirds cubed, what am I doing? I'm doing 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. And we know that to multiply fractions together, I just multiply the tops and then multiply the bottoms. So 2 thirds, um, so, I, so I end up here with uh, 2 cubed over 3 cubed. And you can see that this argument then is going to uh, hold in general. Right, so the page is getting so full it's almost forcing me out of the screen here. Um, so let's leave it there. I think at this point you can do questions one and two of the worksheet if you want to, or you can watch the rest of the teaching videos and do all of the worksheet at the end. Up to you. So the next rules that we want to look at here are these ones that say x to the half is the square root of x, and in general x to the 1 over n is the nth root of x. And again, you might have come across these before, um, and uh, but we don't always think carefully about why they're true. So why would x to the half be the square root of x? Well, just imagine taking x to the half and multiplying it by itself. Okay, so 
x to the one half times x to the one half. Now, by the rules of addition for indices, right, let's say x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b, this should be equal to x to the one half plus one half. Now, one half plus one half is one. So this is x to the one, and x to the one is just x. So if we look at what we've got here, I've got this number, x to the one half, that when I multiply it by itself, or if you like, when I square it, I get x. Right? Actually, we could also do this with the power rule for indices, right? That says, you know, x to the one half squared is x to the one half times two, which is also x to the one. Right? So x to the half is a number that when I square it, I get x, and that's exactly the definition of the square root of x. Right? So, uh, you know, the square root of x squared is x. So it must be that if these rules are going to be consistent, uh, the x to the half must mean the same thing as the square root of x. Just a little word on the notation here. The square root of x here, this symbol, actually means the positive square root of x. So actually, you know, numbers can have two square roots. So for example, if I try to solve the equation x squared equals 49, it should have two uh, roots, roots as in uh, it's a bit confusing. We use roots to mean like the solutions or the answers to the equation, uh, as well as this other way of using it to do with square roots, right? So the solutions, if you like, to this equation are x equals seven or minus seven, right? So plus or minus seven. So I could say the two square roots of 49 are plus or minus seven. Um, but this symbol, the square root of 49, means the positive square root, which is seven here. And we're gonna use x to the half in the same way here. So when I write 49 to the one half, that's going to mean seven and not minus seven, okay? Now, um, for the other one, x to the one over n in general, well, okay, let's just think about the same thing for x to the one third, right? Now, if I multiply x to the third by itself three times, okay, I get x to the one third plus one third plus one third, and that would also be x to the one or x, right? Or you can use the multiplication rule, if you like, and say that x to the one third cubed is x to the one third times three, which is x to the one, uh, which is x. So again, I've got x to the one third is a number that when you multiply it by itself three times, you get x. So it must be here that x to the one third is the cube root of x. And we can use exactly the same argument for any uh, power to say, okay, if I do x to the one over n and I raise it to the nth power, again, that's gonna give me x to the one over n times n which is x to the one, or just x, okay? So it must be that uh, x to the one over n is equal to the uh, nth root of x. So let's just do a few examples using these rules that you can get some more practice of uh, in the worksheet. So if I start with something like nine to the one half, I'm gonna remember that the one half power means the square root, so this is the square root of nine, and I can simplify this to give three. You might like to think about these before I uh, do the answer, so feel free to pause once I've written down the first part of the question here, right? So eight to the third, have a think about what that is. Well, the one third power is the cube root of eight here. One third power means cube root, and the cube root of eight is just two. All right, um, we could do some slightly more complicated things. We could do something like 36 to the three over two. And the way I would deal with a fractional power like this is to split it up using the rule that uh, x to the a all to the power of b is x to the a times b, but we're gonna kind of use it in reverse here and say that this is 36 to the one half all cubed, right? So a fraction like three over two, I can always write it as a half times three and sort of split it into two using this power rule. Then 36 to the one half is the square root of 36. So I just need to do the 30, square root of 36 cubed. So that's six cubed and you might know that six cubed is 216, or if not, you can work it out. Right, another example would be 125 to the two thirds. Again, I can write this as 125 to the one third squared, and 125 to the one third would be the cube root of 125, and then I want to square that. Cube root of 125 is five, and five squared is equal to 25. We could make these a little bit harder, by introducing uh, some fractions uh, into the answers here, uh, sorry, into the questions here as well. And we'll do that for a few more examples. So for example, if I had five over seven to the minus one, 
Uh, right, so the thing we know about the minus 1 power is that x to the minus 1 is always 1 over x. So I need to take the reciprocal, do 1 over this fraction, right? I need, uh, I need 1 over 5 sevenths. Now, 1 divided by a fraction, right? So that's 1 divided by 5 sevenths. That always flips the fraction upside down. This is something that comes up at A level over and over again. Really important to understand why this is. So you could use your ordinary rules for division here and write... 1 as 1 over 1, and you know that when you divide by a fraction, you turn that upside down and multiply, don't you? But the 1 over 1 doesn't really do anything in this multiplication, right? It's 1 times 7 and 1 times 5, so I'm just left here with 7 over 5. So when I do 1 over a fraction, it turns the fraction upside down. Make sure you remember that. And that's the same if we've got a minus 1 in the power. 5 sevenths to the minus 1, then, it's just going to turn the fraction upside down and give us 7 fifths. So we can extend this idea to having other powers, including with negatives in them. So 5 sevenths to the minus 2 here, I can write that as 5 sevenths to the minus 1 squared. Again, using the same rule uh, that we were using before, x to the a times b is uh, x to the a all to the b for the powers. So when I've got these compl complex powers, or I shouldn't say complex, complicated powers, um, I can split them up uh, in this way. Right, so I can do 5 over 7 to the minus 1, that's 7 fifths, and then working outwards through the brackets here, I've got 7 fifths squared, which just gives me then 49 over 25. Right, let's do a couple of really hard examples before I let you loose on the worksheet. Uh, so 49 over 4 to the 3 over 2. Okay, right, well again, I'm going to just split this up and say this is 49 over 4 to the 1 half cubed. Anytime I've got a fraction like this, whether it's we've done them with just integers in here before, with fractions, it's not going to make any difference. Right, so I've got to do the square root of 49 over 4, uh, all cubed. The square root of 49 over 4 is the square root of 49, which is 7, over the square root of 4, which is 2, uh, and that's all cubed. And then 7 cubed is 343, and 2 cubed is 8. You might have to work that out if you don't already know it. Right, and this step here, by the way, where I say, um, you know, the square root of a over b is just the same thing as the uh, square root of a over the square root of b, you can also think of as an application of that rule of powers, right, that says that a over b to the n is just a to the n over b to the n, where the power here, uh, n, uh, is equal to uh, one half in this example uh, for the square root, right? Um, so all of these rules should be consistent whether we put in negative or fractional numbers uh, or whatever else. Okay, one last example here. Let's have a look at 125 over 8 uh, to the minus 2 thirds. And now I've got three things to unpack here really. And I always like to deal with the negative bit first, right? So 125 over 8 to the minus 1, and then we'll deal with the 2 thirds later, right? Because the 125 over 8 to the minus 1, the minus 1 power just flips it upside down. So I can simplify this question now by just saying it's 8 over 125 to the 2 thirds, and now it looks a lot like the previous question we did here. So this is what we do in maths a lot of the time, right? You don't try to attack the whole thing at once. You, if you can do something that makes it a little bit easier, and then a little bit easier, and then a little bit easier, and then finally you'll, you'll realise you've solved it. Okay, so this is 8 over 125 uh, to the power of 1 third squared, using the same method as before. So, um, so this is the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 125. That's the 1 third power, all squared. Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 125 is 5. And now I need to square that. And 2 fifths squared is 2 squared over 5 squared, which is 4 over 25. So you should be ready now to tackle the rest of the worksheet for this section. So have a go at those and I will see you uh, in the solutions.